You're watching Vinyl like Puma Gaming. What's up guys, back with another Borderlands 2 countdown, and today we're going to be going over some of the best DLC guns in Borderlands 2. Now, I know that there are a lot of bad DLC guns in Borderlands 2, particularly when it comes to both Seraph and Pearlescent weapons, but when you take a step back and look at some of the best weapons in Borderlands 2, a significant number of them come from the game's DLC. Now, before we get into this video, I'm just going to say that there are probably more than just 10 amazing DLC guns and weapons in Borderlands 2. Uh, there are a lot of great weapons that didn't make this list. So if you don't see one of your favorite weapons on here, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's bad, but I did have to narrow my choices down to just 10, and I think these 10 are among some of the best DLC guns in the game. I'm also trying to include a variety of weapons on this list, and I have at least one Pearlescent, one Seraph, and one unique weapon from each of the four major campaign DLCs. Otherwise, I think we can agree most of the guns on this list would have been from either the Captain Scarlet DLC or the Hammerlock DLC. But without further ado, these will be the top 10 best DLC guns and weapons to get in Borderlands 2, starting now. Number 10, the Sword Splosion. So the Sword Splosion is an atypical weapon that can be acquired in the Dragon Keep DLC for Borderlands 2. This gun is weird because it's a Torg E-Tech shotgun, and as many players know, Torg doesn't make E-Tech weapons at all. However, unlike most other E-Tech shotguns, the Sword Splosion fires swords as opposed to this weird Iridian energy that's fired by most conventional E-Tech splat guns. The sword projectiles also split into more swords upon hitting a surface, which can explode, dealing additional damage to enemies. While it's generally recommended that you get a vertical grip on all of your shotguns, I would say the casual sword explosion is by far the best version. Instead of just firing one projectile, you will fire three, which will all split into smaller swords, dealing a decent chunk of damage. Now, this weapon is great on everybody, but it's probably a favorite of Axton players in particular. This is because it gets damage boosts from both gun and grenade damage bonus. Although, the only real issue that I have with this gun is that the child swords can deal damage to the player, and I occasionally forget this when I use this gun and I'll run into my explosions and my character will go down. But if you're used to using this weapon regularly and you know not to run towards what you're shooting at, you should be good. Now, to get this gun, you will need to complete a side quest called the Sword and the Stoner, and as I mentioned previously, you will need the Dragon Keep DLC for Borderlands 2. Number 9, The Kitten. So the Kitten is from the Torg DLC for Borderlands 2, and I would say it's one of the many reasons you should play through that DLC. Otherwise, Torg is hilarious, and both Moxie and Tiny Tina reappear, and they are some great NPCs. But I digress. The Kitten Assault Rifle is a fantastic weapon that is fairly atypical for an assault rifle. The first thing that you'll notice is that it has a projectile multiplier and fires three projectiles at the cost of one bullet. And speaking of projectiles, the projectiles have a fixed firing pattern in the shape of a smiley face, which is both an advantage as well as a disadvantage. Uh, I would say that because the projectile pattern makes hip firing more accurate, but also limits the weapon's range. And for all intents and purposes, the Kitten is sort of a spray and pray type weapon if you catch my drift. Otherwise, it's a moxie weapon too, which means it heals you for a percentage of the damage that it deals, uh, which immediately puts it over many of the other assault rifles in Borderlands 2. Uh, my only real complaint is that it doesn't deal any splash damage, because I think if it did, the Kitten would be absolutely monstrous. If you want one, go complete Everyone Wants to be Wanted in the Torg DLC. All you have to do is post some posters while avoiding gunfire. Number 8, the Tatler. The Tatler is a really nice SMG that's acquired by killing Hyperius the Invincible in the Captain Scarlet DLC. Like all of the other Seraph weapons from this DLC, the Tatler has fairly high base damage at the cost of both accuracy as well as projectile speed. And it also has some other interesting properties, like a consistently fixed fire rate regardless of the parts that you've got, and it also always spawns with a melee attachment. In fact, you can't have any other accessory on the Tattler that might increase damage, improve magazine size, or projectile speed. Even still, I think you'll find that the Tattler is a very capable weapon, as it always has a times 3 projectile multiplier and can come in all elements. You could also argue that because the weapon is so consistent, it may be one of the easier weapons on this list to farm each elemental and non-elemental version for. 
The Tatler is a really nice weapon on all characters, however I think it excels on Maya provided you have either a cat or legendary cat class mod and you spec your character around phase lock. This weapon is devastating with Cataclysm and other skills like Wreck, Chain Reaction, and Converge. And provided enemies aren't pulled in close enough to get slagged by phase lock, Reaper will help soften them up a little bit, and Accelerate will help the projectiles move a little bit faster, making using the Tatler at a distance a little bit more bearable. If you like Maya, I highly recommend that you go after this gun. It's a really, really good gun, and I think you're going to like it. Number seven, the Twister. So the Twister is a really nice, unique gun from the Hammerlock DLC, and as some of you may know, it's fairly unconventional for a Jacob's weapon. Not only does the Twister come in shock element, but its projectile pattern is in the shape of a Twister. You'll find that the projectile pattern makes it relatively easy to hip fire, and the Twister can deal a massive amount of damage on critical hits. I would also say the only real problem with the Twister is acquiring it. Obviously, you'll need the Hammerlock DLC, but you will also need to spawn a mini-boss named Omidomidok. Uh, this requires evolving a badass savage several times, and unlike your Goliaths, a Witch Doctor will need to be present in order to evolve the badass savages. On top of that, even if you kill Omidomidok, there's a good chance that you may not get a Twister, let alone the version that you want. Now, the Twister is great on several different characters. Among the community, a lot of people really like to use the Twister on Gage, as it tends to go pretty well with Anarchy and the Little Big Trouble skills like Wires Don't Talk and Shock and Awe. Zero players will find that the Twister goes really well with Boar, as some of the swirling projectiles can hit multiple times. It's also worth mentioning that the Twister can go really well with the Lady Fist. If you're playing as Maya, you can phase lock an enemy, you can shoot the Twister at a crit spot, and quickly swap to a Lady Fist for a massive amount of critical hit damage. Overall, get a Twister, it's a really good gun. Number six, the Lead Storm. So the Lead Storm is a weapon that you may not often think about as being among some of the best weapons in Borderlands 2. I think one of the reasons for this is because it's an assault rifle, which are typically viewed as one of the lesser weapon types in the game, and also because it's a spinning gun assault rifle, meaning it has to fully rev up in order for the player to fully realize its maximum damage potential. The Lead Storm is best described as a weird cross between Borderlands 2's Hail Assault Rifle and the Shredder Fire from the base game. It has the fire rate of the Shredder Fire, while it also has the Hail's arcing projectiles that split after a certain distance. Unfortunately, unlike the Hail, the Lead Storm's projectiles don't deal splash damage and also don't heal the player for a portion of the damage dealt. On the flip side though, the Lead Storm splits into three projectiles instead of the Hail's two projectiles. Like all other weapons with unlisted projectiles, the Lead Storm gets boosted by the B-Shield. So you'll find this weapon is especially effective when using a fully charged B, provided that you can get the distancing right to where the projectiles split. Overall, I would say this is a really solid assault rifle, and it's definitely one of Borderlands 2's best minigun assault rifles. If you want it, you're going to have to kill Veracitus for it. That may sound like a tall order for this gun, but I would say if you can pull it off, you're going to have a really nice assault rifle for regular mobbing and for fighting raid bosses. Number 5, the Grog Nozzle. Now originally, I was going to include the magic missile, but I don't think it would have felt right to not have had the Grog Nozzle on this particular list. After all, the Grog Nozzle is Borderlands 2's best healing weapon, surpassing every other moxie weapon in the game. As far as specifics go, the Grog Nozzle has low damage, but it also provides both a passive critical hit damage boost, as well as a passive healing bonus. So this weapon is amazing both when dual wielded on Salvador, and it's also a really nice weapon to swap to if you're running low on health and want to heal off of the damage that your grenades will deal or your other guns will deal provided and depending on their projectile speed. The Grog Nozzle also has a drunk effect, which causes the camera to tilt from left to right, and the player gets massively decreased fire rate, while also gaining about 5 additional projectiles to each shot, without any additional ammo cost. Between all of these attributes, the Grog Nozzle is insanely powerful on pretty much any character. 
As far as acquiring this gun goes, the most reliable way to do so is to leave the quest, The Beard Makes the Man Active. If you complete this quest, you will lose your ability to use the Grog Nozzle. Alternatively, if you were playing Borderlands 2 during the $100,000 loot hunt, you had a chance to obtain a legitimate copy that you could use independent of this particular quest. However, if you wish to do something like that now, you're going to need to use a save editor. If there is one gun on this list that you should acquire the Dragon Keep DLC for, I would definitely say that it's for the Grog Nozzle. Once you do, prepare to become almost invincible. Number 4. The Becca. So I would say that out of all of the pearlescent guns and weapons in Borderlands 2, the Becca is one of, if not the best pearlescent guns in the game. This is because it has a fairly unconventional projectile pattern that's somewhat difficult to describe, but is best shown by viewing the gameplay. What happens is you fire the initial projectile, which travels at regular speed, however there's also a secondary projectile that seems to stop mid-flight, and then proceeds to keep going while also splitting into three different projectiles. These unlisted projectiles deal the same amount of damage as the initial projectile, and they also benefit from full amp damage from the B-Shield. So if you're using the B-Shield and you're tired of your Sandhawk, the Becca is something that you could definitely look into. In addition to being a very powerful pearlescent weapon, the Becca is also probably one of the best non-elemental weapons as one of the best assault rifles in the game. I'd say the only things that would make it better was if it was somehow fully automatic and it came in all elements. That would make what is an amazing gun even more amazing. My only real complaint about the Becca is its acquisition. It was added with the second Ultimate Vault Hunter Upgrade Pack DLC, and it requires you to farm tubby enemies in order to get it, which only appear after level 61. And the other problem is that tubbies are fairly rare, and you're not guaranteed to get a pearlescent weapon every time you kill one. But if you're curious, I do recommend you go after it. The Becca is a fantastic weapon. If you can, try to get a version with the flush prefix. Number three, the Pimpernel. I think it's safe to say that the Pimpernel is easily the best DLC sniper rifle in Borderlands 2. While the Godfinger is actually capable of some crazy stuff at significant range, the Pimpernel is capable of dealing monstrous amounts of damage both at short and relatively long range. The Pimpernel is fairly unique, and its projectile pattern is somewhat hard to describe and is easier to show, but what happens is you fire the initial projectile, and when it either hits a target or a surface, it emits five additional orbs that can hit and deal damage to enemies. Because of that, you're going to shoot the Pimpernel in ways unlike you would for most other sniper rifles. Instead of aiming directly at your enemy's critical hit spots, what you're supposed to do with the Pimpernel is aim just south of their critical hit spots in the hopes that you can get some of the orbs to crit for additional damage. While it takes some practice, and I will admit that I'm certainly not the best with the Pimpernel, it's possible to get a lot of damage out of this gun. Now, the Pimpernel goes really well with Zero's bore ability, as you can occasionally get the initial as well as orbs to trigger the skill for ridiculous amounts of damage. If you play as Salvador, the Pimpernel benefits from passive weapon effects when dual wielded with Torg rocket launchers, and for best results for that, you're going to want to use a Slag Pimpernel. If you want this gun, you can acquire it by completing the Don't Copy That Floppy side quest mission in Borderlands 2's Captain Scarlet DLC. Number 2, The Sandhawk. For the veteran players out there, this gun isn't going to be a surprise. The Sandhawk, when combined with the B-Shield, is easily one of the most overpowered item combos in the entire game. Most mob enemies will get destroyed in one or two hits, while even raid bosses will take a significant amount of damage as well. Even without the B-Shield, the Sandhawk is a great weapon. As far as specifics go, the Sandhawk consumes three bullets per shot and fires in a fixed bullet pattern as it travels through the air. And as you can tell from the gameplay, the projectiles travel in the shape of a bird flapping its wings. The only real issue I have with this is that the projectiles tend to move fairly slow as they travel and on most characters, this could be a problem, especially if you don't have skills that will boost the projectile speed. Of course, if you're playing Zero or Maya, you have Velocity and Accelerate, and both of these skills will improve the projectile speed. You may also find that you're going to want a doll stock on your Sandhawk. This will bring the burst count up to 4 and will significantly boost DPS. 
keep in mind too that the Sandhawk can come in all elements and is pretty easy to get as long as you're willing to play through the Captain Scarlet DLC. In order to get this gun, you'll need to complete the DLC main quest mission called Whoops. It's pretty nice that if you simply play through the Captain Scarlet DLC, you can get your hands on one of the best weapons in the game. Number one, the Interfacer. Now, this may not be that much of a surprise, but not only is the Interfacer one of the best Seraph weapons in the game, it's also probably Borderlands 2's most powerful shotgun. While it takes a little more skill to use than your Unkempt Herald from the base game, the Interfacer deals a massive amount of critical hit damage and can deal crazy amounts of damage against raid bosses when used by Salvador. The Interfacer can be made even stronger when it's dual wielded with either the Grog Nozzle or the Lady Fist Pistols. As for the Lady Fist Pistol, it's going to allow you to boost your critical hit damage to insane levels, and with the Grog Nozzle, it'll boost your critical hit damage a decent amount, but it will also allow your shots to heal you. That said, the Interfacer has two flaws. The first is that it fires these projectiles that are similar to gyro jets, and as you may know, gyro projectiles don't travel particularly fast, which means that fighting at significant distance with the Interfacer is really difficult. The second flaw isn't as much of a problem with Salvador as it is with other characters. The Interfacer consumes two ammo per shot, and this can prove to be too much for most other characters. Since Salvador just regenerates ammo while he's concerning, the Interfacer is a much more viable weapon for him to use. There is actually a third flaw as well. In order to acquire this weapon, you will need to kill Verastis, who is insanely hard to beat due in large part to the massive amount of health that Verastis has. But if you can't beat him, you have a chance on getting your hands on one of the best weapons in the game. And since Verastis is part of the Hammerlock DLC, you will need the Hammerlock DLC to get this gun. All right, guys, that's gonna wrap up this particular video. If you like this video, please be sure to leave a like, and as always, take care, and I'll see y'all next time.